Why not to failure? To failure is a totally fine thing as well. There are downsides of going to failure all the time. Uh, it seems that as you get closer to failure, the amount of stimulus per set rises. So if you have a set where you stop at two reps shy of failure and another person has a set where they stop just at failure or some, someone has to drag the barbell off of them, the person who went to failure is going to grow more muscle. That's a good thing, but it's by a small margin, maybe just several percent more growth. The downside is training to failure generates a lot more fatigue, probably not a few percent more, maybe a few dozen percent more, which is a big deal. If you're going to use a program, which mostly has you do three or two or one rep shy of failure, you'll get great stimulus and you'll be able to recover from lots of sets over the course of weeks and months, which means you'll get a great stimulus and a great hypertrophy result. If you insist on going to failure even beyond in your sets, you can get very good results, but you have to reduce the total volume of your training because the amount of fatigue you accumulate is going to be rapid. It's going to happen fast. So have you ever heard of like HIT training, Mike Menser, high intensity training, HIT, um, Mike Menser and those folks were fans of going to failure and beyond with drop sets and crazy shit like that. They got really good results, but they don't do very many sets, a few sets per muscle per workouts, all they do because they realized we can't recover from this. You can recover from more if you stay a little shy of failure. My suspicion is that if you want the best overall muscle growth and you have all the time in the world to train, that somewhere between three and one rep in reserve on average for a program is a really good idea. 